I look forward to seeing you all on Monday. For now, we're going to take a look at a short six-minute video on differences between persuasive and predictive writing. Pay attention, and you may be able to win our Kahoot quiz game. Okay, here we go. So there are similarities and differences between a predictive writing, which is what you did last semester, and the persuasive writing to the court that you'll be doing this semester. Basically, everything you learned so far still applies, but we're learning some new techniques below. For instance, you're going to have a preliminary statement now. There's an example in the back of your book in Newman, um, and that's also a PDF up on Twin. Talk that more in a later class. You still have a fact section, as you did in your previous memos. In this fact section, you're now going to be using emphasis and de-emphasis to persuade, as well as some storytelling techniques that we'll get into more in a later class. So, regarding those positions of emphasis, anything at the beginning or the end has more emphasis. So, you want to put anything that you want to stand out, helpful information, at the beginning or the end of your document, the section, the paragraph, or even the sentence. There's also an emphatic style. Shorter sentences garner more emphasis. Active voice and action verbs garner more emphasis. And the more concise you can be, the more emphasis your writing will have. In contrast, things that we want to de-emphasize go in the middle of the document, the section, the paragraph, or the sentence. Also, a, a more slow or less emphatic style would be to put something in dependent clauses um, or to use uh, being verbs, passive voice, longer sentences are all ways of de-emphasizing. Aside from all of the above, the rest of it is the same as what you've already done. So you still have to be accurate. Um, in fact, now you're citing to the record and so you've got to be very accurate with what respect to what the record says. That's something that takes students a lot of getting used to um, because they think pers being persuasive is the time to get creative. Um, you still have to disclose certain facts um, if you believe, if they're material um, to the case. Uh, you want to include potentially relevant facts. So, if it smells relevant, you want to include it you're still including background facts. In fact, now the court knows even less about this case than that attorney that you were writing to before. So anything that provides context, you want to include. And certainly you're including any facts that you use later in application, including counter argument or rebuttal. You're also refraining from arguing in the facts. Again, I know that seems counterintuitive because it's persuasive writing, but we save arguing for the argument. The facts are just the facts. You want to start with the first thing that happened to your client and end with the last thing that happened to your client. In later classes, we're going to burrow deeply into chronology so that we can try to put the reader on your client's timeline. And finally, this is something that's a difference, you're going to include record citations. So this is an example of the type of citations you'll use for the clerk's record and the reporter's record. And yes, that's for every sentence of the facts, you want to include record citations. Within the argument, you're also using those positions of emphasis and de-emphasis. 
Headings and topic sentences are written to persuade. We have entire classes devoted to those two topics, headings and topic sentences, uh, because you can get a lot of mileage out of them. Within the argument, you're still using an organization paradigm. Those of you who used CREAC, we're going to be using CREAC again this semester. CREAC, as a refresher, stands for Conclusion, Rule, Explanation, Application, and Conclusion. We're going to talk just a moment about explanation. So it's still the same, same explanation paragraphs you were doing before. I like for them to be narrative paragraphs. You are still being accurate. Um, it's just that now you're using those positions of emphasis within the explanation section or within the paragraphs as well as that emphatic and de-emphasizing style within explanation. So the counter argument and rebuttal within the application are still required. We're going to talk more, again, in a later class about how to structure the counter-argument um, and the rebuttal so that they're persuasive, but you are still including them. All right, I look forward to seeing you on Monday.